Ladies and gentlemen, fish head of all ages, Jen Cravasi here with you at Jekyll Baits. I'm your hostess with the mostest, TGIF. Thank goodness we fished. Today's Friday, April 27th, 2019, and I'm finally getting around to finishing up the basics. This is part two of two, and what if I only have a basic starter kit? What patterns can I make? On the last video in part one, we showed you a cool yellow perch and how to do that one. And on today's video, we're going to show you how to do a Threadfin Shad. Now, I started the video on a different SD card, and I apologize. For some reason, the uh, GoPro Hero has decided that it no longer likes the SD card that I had in it. So we've switched SD cards, and hopefully we won't have any further interruptions. Let's get down to brass tacks. I've chosen a wake bait. Shad, when they're wounded or dying, will come up to the surface. And one of the cool things that we can do is rip it through the top section of the water column. And one of the most effective patterns out there is your thread fin shad. It's the meat and potatoes of everybody's arsenal in their tackle box. And I'm going to show you how to do a cool one with just three colors. We're going to use a primer of opaque white, which is my special sauce. It's like KFC. Nobody knows. It's a secret. Some transparent bright blue. I'm sorry, this is the ultramarine blue. Wait, so that means this is not the color that comes with ultramarine. It's, it's a bright blue that comes with the, um, the beginning starter kit. And I know I have it somewhere. We just got to find it. Hold your horses, folks. It's here. I know for a fact that I have it. Dun, dun, dun. There it is. Bright blue. Bright blue color 5106 is the color that comes in your starter kits. So, just so y'all know, I'm not cheating. I want to make sure that I'm true to my word that we use only the colors that come in that. For some reason, ultramarine is real close to the bright blue, but it's a little bit different. Not much, but this is a a bit brighter of a blue, which actually works out for the best because that darker bright blue is kind of what you want. So this has everything to do with blending. Everything. And we could reduce if we wanted to, but I'm not even going to do that. So let's go ahead and grab our helping hands. It's beautiful today, folks. I've got the roll-up door open. I mean, it's just, you can't ask for anything better. At least I can't. It's about 74 degrees. It feels like a California Delta day, like the same time of year. Um, so anyways, I'm happy. I'm a happy girl today. It's Friday, which really doesn't mean a whole lot as a small business owner because I'm working six, seven days a week sometimes. But when I get to play, I play just as hard as I work. So let's go ahead and get this base coat on. This is your true white. It's the white that comes with your starter. It's an opaque. Um, for the purposes of this video, I am using opaque white as the primer. This is not my normal special sauce. I have not mixed it in this particular bottle yet. If you guys have watched my What's in My Shop video, which probably has come out right before this video, you know that I keep everything within an arm's reach anymore out here in the shop. So my heat set, which is a Conair 1875, it's super powerful and it's very effective, is always on my right. My airbrush is always on my left. Quick heat set because it actually makes more sense if we blend. Now, a thread fin shad, we're gonna speckle with black just a little bit. I'm gonna use a Q-tip as the shad dot, and we're gonna keep the, the shad dot true as we can. And then we're gonna layer in just a little bit of that black on the back of it, and it's gonna turn out cool. It's gonna look basic, and that's okay, because if that's the only colors that you have, you could probably blend it down a little bit more. Um, I could probably put a, about a drop of this 
into the bright blue into a little medicine cup but let's say you don't have medicine cups so we're just going to do what I normally do which is directly in here and I'm not going to pull this white out I'm just going to mix it as it sprays through I'm also going to pull my pressure back I'm at about 35 right now I want to pull that back to about 10 and then we're just going to start and do very light layers hit the nose there just get around the eye and then we're going to angle our airbrush to where it's shooting down the sides instead of right at the sides and that will layer in a little bit better than if we came at it right like that and you'll understand what I mean in a second because I am going to get a little bit of blue right there on the sides and you guys can see that it comes in down each side but not on the middle of the chest area turn that back up blow that out I am going to clean that in between but I'm not going to take a whole lot of time doing it because the next color that's in there is a dark color I just want to make sure that my cleaner is out of the chamber I always back flush it too if I'm really trying to get all the color out and all the cleaner out I back flush it and then spend enough time blowing it through to where I don't see any paint or junk coming out on my glove lots of spring cleaning going on in the neighborhood you can hear my neighbor across the way is got his it sounds like a jigsaw Turn this pressure back down. Now we're going to be a little more careful when we do this black. We want to see how it's shooting first. And I'm just kind of kind of feathering it across the top because we really don't want it to be super super dark. The only thing that I'm going to darken in are these eyes. And do the same thing again right here and I'm going to do a little bit of darkening at the base of where the mouth would be now I don't know if you've noticed but the shad in real life don't have a whole lot of red on them and we're gonna avoid that as much as we can I might do a little bit of accenting but if I do it's not going to be bright red I'm going to mix my red with my base white and get a muted like a, almost a pinkish color clean that out real well you know what I am going to do that just to show you that you can mix the colors because everybody has a red in their starter kit so here's what we do one drop of red that's it one drop red has the tendency to a bunch of drops of white red has the tendency to get dark real 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 real, real fast we just want a tent and you can see how fast I 
Uh, it, you know, it almost still might be too dark. I really didn't want it that dark. But again, I haven't deviated from the, the basic plan, which is just the primary colors. And your starter kit, all I've done is I've taken one single drop of red. Red is very impactful as a color. But I'm going to add just a little bit more white into it because it's too red still. Red is one of the hardest colors to tone down. That should do it. That's a fairly light pink. So if you guys want a ratio on that, the ratio is going to be about 20 drops of white to one drop of red. And that should do it. We'll set that back. I'm going to move this out of the way for now. Drop my Q-tip on the floor. I didn't mean to do that. We're going to add this right into the chamber here. And that's way more than enough to accomplish what we want to accomplish on this. I want to add just a little bit to the nose here. Add just a little bit to the throat and the underside of these gills. Just a little bit to the tail. And then what I'm going to come back and do is, you know, may maybe just a little bit to the bottom of these gill plates. Yeah, that works. Now we're going to come back and hit this with a little bit more white, but I'm going to add a little bit of reducer to it so that it doesn't completely cover what we've already done. I've got white in here and I'm going to add just a couple of drops of reducer. The reducer that I'm using is the 4011 Auto Air Colors by Createx. I just have it put in a generic bottle squeeze bottle because that makes more sense to me. I'm just going to mix it through, get it nice and thin so it has a transparent quality to it. You want this a runny thin because again we don't want to screw up what we did before. We don't want to cover it, what I'm trying to say there. But at the same time, we want to kind of clean up the image of this bait a little bit. And that's a real good way to do it. And again, this is, again, it's too much. You don't need that much. But you can see, just in layering it on, And then we're going to come back over it and we're going to hit the top again with a little bit of black. You just want to have the appearance of that blue on there. You don't want to overkill the blue. Just blow that off. I'm not going to clean the chamber because that was super runny. And then we'll add just a couple of drops of black. And pull that pressure way back to about 10. And it doesn't matter if this has a really wide spray pattern because you kind of want this to look like a shad would. And I'm doing a little flicking action with my brush. You can see I'm about eight inches away, maybe. So 
So there we've got in our dots. Just a few on a belly. And you have a fairly cool dusted shad. We're going to put the cleaner in this. And we're going to get a shad dot on it. But that's how to kind of play around with basic primary colors. It's all in layering and the consistency of your paint. And if you know how to blend colors, because that's important. I did not do that on purpose on the last one because I wanted to show you that you didn't have to blend colors. But if you only have five colors, basically if you have blue, red, yellow, white, and black, that's the only five colors you have in this world, you have enough to make every color. Every single color. You can make orange, you can make pink. Go back and watch my crusty old video on the color wheel and how to mix down paints. I hope that it'll help you a little bit. We're going to let that cleaner get all happy in there. Set that off to the side. Set our pepto bismol back to the side. Now, I'm going to do this shad dot. And that's pretty easy to pull off as well. Really don't need a whole lot going on there. I'm just going to pull off a piece of tape, set it in a random spot on my desk because I can just peel it up afterwards. Now for this we are going to use just black. Q-tips have a tendency to soak up paint at a rapid rate. So make sure you get your Q-tip doused, but then put it at an angle. Now we're going to pull this up off and we're going to make a small shad dot. We're not going to make a huge one. Just like that. And we want this to look as natural as we can. And see, even that has faded in that shorter period of time because the paint has absorbed into this Q tip. And there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our basic color. Threadfin Shad, dusted. We're going to heat set this and then we're going to come back and put the eyes in and clear coat it. Let's see what Mike's up to. That's clever. Hey, I said it before in the last video I did, but if you guys do not understand how important to the industry and the custom painting world Michael Ornstein has been, you absolutely have to go check him out. It's Lure Me In Customs, uh, Custom Crankbaits. He's on YouTube. He is a mentor to so many of us. He's amazing. Go watch him. I mean it. In the meantime, let's show you in natural light because I have my roll-up door open. So this is so exciting. You know, the sun's doing crazy stuff to it. But yeah, that looks really good. All right. Bring that up just a little bit. We're going to select some cool eyes. Now the eyes, that's up to you guys. There's so many places, so many places where you guys can get eyes. Today, I'm going to use something a little bit different. I'm going to be using some eyes that I got from Lure Parts Online. They're called Real Eyes. They're natural. Now, if you guys have looked at reference pictures for Threadfin and Gizzard and Alabama Shad and all that good stuff, you know that they have a silverish yellow with a dark edge around their pupil, dark edge around the rim of their eyeball. 
So this is what we're using. There's your part number, 2816-14. The 14 is for six millimeters and it's a quarter inch, which is a six millimeter. It's close, it's a little bit off because millimeters are not inches, tenths. I'm not gonna get into mathematics with you guys. I'm sure you guys get it. The other thing that I really like about these, let's pull this out. They're made in pairs, one for each eye. So you've got mirrors. So they've flipped, the, whoever designed these real eyes did a very, very good job at doing pairs. So that's, um, I'm super happy because most, most of the time, even with living eyes, living eyes are great. Um, they center it, but they don't flip it. So it's always gonna be one side. You can use them on both sides, M many of us do, um, but the real deal there is that they're designed just to be cookie cutter. The real eyes from Lure Parts Online, or wherever they're made, I'm sure Lure Parts Online gets them from somewhere just like the rest of us get stuff from somewhere else. Um, they're just, they're great. They're well thought out. 3D eyes. I'm getting low on my super glue here. I always super glue the eyes, folks, um, because eyes have a tendency to be targets in the water for these fish. And if they get, if the face of this lure gets bit, then that's one of the first things that gets destroyed is the eye. Um, so you want to make sure your eyes are set in there very well. And that is your Threadfin Shad. And look how cool it turned out. You've got your speckling, you've got your small shad dot that we did with a Q-tip. We've got the pink, which is the combination of about 20 drops of white primer, any primer will do. One drop of your starter red and reducer. Reducer is the key because you really want that runny and liquidy. You don't want to just blast Pepto-Bismol <laughs> on your lure. You want it to be very subtle, um, but you haven't deviated from your, your cause here, which is to make sure you're staying with primary colors. All you've done is you've blended the red and the white, which comes in everybody's starter kit. So you can do this if you have a pack of five colors, red, blue, yellow, black and white. Most starter kits come with green these days, but green is nothing more than yellow plus blue in equal parts. And then you get your shading from that as you add a little more of one and less of the other. So, but just play around with that. I encourage you guys to play around with shading. Just goof around on scrap paper or get a sketchbook that's got thick, like a mixed media art book. You can pick them up at Walmart for like six bucks. Um, and blend colors. I mean, literally, that's, I blend colors. That's why I have so much fun with what I do. You have to love what you do, folks. You have to love what you do. So I'm gonna pull the tape off of this. We're gonna sign this lure, and we're gonna get it in some clear coat, because I promised you on these vi on these session videos that we go start to finish on the, on the primaries, so that you guys can see everything that I'm doing. There's not one thing that I've done on this video that has been, um, that you guys have not seen me do, except for maybe a heat set. Back over at the spray bench, I'm gonna grab my hangers. And uh, for those of you just joining me for the first time, I use picture hanging wire for these. Very inexpensive, it comes in rolls. I've got it up on the wall. It's 25 pound galvanized steel wire. You guys can see it right there. Um, 18 gauge um, they make it 10 gauge that's a little bit soft for me kind of has a tendency that you don't get many uses out of that but when you um, when you have the 25 pound it's pretty good it's pretty good 10 pound is a little light but I pinch this together with my needle nose and then funny thing about now this isn't too bad but some of them are kind of tucked in a little bit more but one of the things that I want to do on this bait is I want to put in my tail drip wire before I dip it because sometimes on these wake baits it's a little tricky sometimes the, 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 
the eyelet has a tendency to be sunken in because this is divoted. This has a little pocket on the bottom of it and they put that tail eyelet in and then sometimes it's really hard once you have clear coat and it's dripping um, to put this. So I always do that first on a, on a wake bait. Now one thing that we can also do since this is a fairly simple pattern is that we can dress this after it's done with a feathered treble. And uh, since it is a wake bait, something like this would be absolutely mind blowing on the back of that. Um, maybe we'll do that. This is KBS Diamond Strength. It is a um, well, like a polyurethane kind of a deal. It, it's a it's a clear coat. It's not a true epoxy. There's no mixing involved and you don't need to uh, spin it on a wheel. As a matter of fact, it's almost detrimental if you do that because it'll grab little air bubbles and air pockets and sometimes things can go horribly wrong. So what I do is I just dip it in real slow. Let my little air bubbles come off of there. Sometimes you'll notice little air bubbles getting caught around the eye, the pupil, and then I use the bill and kind of hang that and you're going to see this dripping down and I do both sides and then just bring it out slow. Keep that jar underneath of it while I bring it over to the clear coat rack. Let's set that magic video timer. You guys are going to see what it looks like dressed with the feather treble on the back. So the KBS has had plenty of dry time on this thread finch ad that we did as the second part of the challenge. And this is the result. And this was white, bright blue, black, one drop of red into about 20 drops of white to do just a little bit of shading on these gill plates in the cheeks to represent what they would normally look like. We did a very small dot near the gill plate and we used real eyes.